Fibrous Sarcoma by Matt Burry and Lisa Anderson. Definition and clinical findings. Fibrous sarcoma are described as malignancies of fibroblasts. The cells responsible for laying down collagen and elastin fibers. This is a histological slide of the fibroblast showing the typical herring bone appearance. The etiology is not completely known, but sometimes correlates with previous radiation exposure to that area. Other predisposing factors include genetic alterations, tissue damage due to heat or scarring, and disease processes such as Hodges disease of bone and osteomyelitis. Although these factors have been found to correlate with the occurrence of fibrocytomas, one true cause of the neoplasm has not been found. Initially, fibrocytomas may be painless, but as the lesion enlarges, patients often present with pain, especially if the fibrocytoma is within bone. Other symptoms that may be experienced depend on the location of the lesion. If the lesion crosses the path of any peripheral nerve, the patient may experience sensory neural abnormalities. If the temporomandibular joint or any musculature are involved, the patient could experience stiffness. Typically, the mucosa over the lesion will appear normal until the mass becomes so large, in which case the mucosa may become erythematous or ulcerated. If the lesion is within bone near the alveolar ridges, the expansion will often cause displacement of teeth. Fibrosarcomas can be seen as a growing mass with localized swelling, especially when they invade the soft tissue. Here are pictures of both a male and female showing the typical growing mass of fibrosarcomas. Clinically, fibrosarcomas are found equally in both males and females. They may occur within bone or soft tissue, with most cases of the jaw occurring in the premolar molar region of the mandible. Of all sarcomas in the head and neck region, fibrosarcoma is the most common. However, of all the regions that fibrosarcoma can occur in the human body, only 0.05% occur in the head and neck, and of those cases, 23% are within the oral cavity. Radiographic findings. Although fibrosarcomas can be found throughout the entire body, the description provided will be specific to the oral cavity. Location. Most commonly in the mandibular premolar molar region, but can occur in any bone or soft tissue. Edge. Ragged, ill-defined borders that are non-sporticated. Shape. Typically elongated following the marrow cavity of the bone, but can present in many variable shapes. Internal structure, radiolucent, other structures. Fibrosarcomas um, typically show a complete destruction of surrounding structures depending on location of the lesion. Examples are alveolar process, inferior border of the mandible, mandibular canal, floor of maxillary sinus or nasal cavity, posterior border of maxilla, lamina dura, cortical plate, or periodontium surrounding the teeth. Number. Typically, they occur singly. Size. Can be variable depending on time of diagnosis or stage of tumor. And this is a pantomograph showing the ill-defined borders and radiolucent internal structure. Based on radiographic and clinical findings, fibrosarcoma can often be confused with many other lesions of the oral cavity. Common differential interpretations are listed here uh, in order of likelihood. Squamous cell carcinoma is a very likely differential interpretation because it, is, because it is the most common oral malignancy. It is radiographically similar in appearance to fibrosarcoma because they both are commonly seen in the posterior mandible, have totally radiolucent internal structures, and both have ill-defined borders. Clinically, squamous cell carcinomas are associated with an ulcerated surface epithelium. This feature is not as likely in fibrosarcomas but secondary ulcers do occur in some enlarged fibrosarcomas, so a biopsy is needed to definitively exclude squamous cell carcinoma from the differential list. The next most likely differential interpretation is a dental cyst. The dental cysts occur commonly within bone and have totally radiolucent internal structures. Dental cysts can usually be differentiated from fibrosarcomas by a well-defined border. However, some cysts associated with chronic duration or secondary infection 
have a less definable border. In these cases, some peripheral sclerosis in adjacent bone is usually seen and potentially differentiates this lesion from fibrosarcoma. The next most likely differential interpretation is osteosarcoma. Osteosarcoma is the most common primary malignant bone tumor, tumor of the head and neck. Both fibrosarcoma and osteosarcoma may show enlargement of affected bone as well as ill-defined borders and complete internal radiolucency. However, osteosarcomas usually have some type of varying internal structure, such as a honeycomb or sclerotic bone appearance. An osteosarcoma without this internal structure may be indistinguishable from fibrosarcoma radiographically. Because of this, again, a biopsy is needed to definitively exclude this malignancy from the differential list. Treatment options for oral fibrosarcoma include surgery, radiation therapy, and chemotherapy. Radical surgery with wide margins is usually advocated as the best outcome treatment because fibrosarcoma is locally invasive, but not commonly malignant. Radiation therapy and chemotherapy are reserved for the special cases that are inoperable or have presence of metastasis. Referral to an oral surgeon is recommended as soon as possible to prevent the malignancy from invading further tissue. Oral surgeons receive several years of extra surgical training and some even specialize in surgically treating malignancies, giving them a lot of experience with these difficult procedures. After surgery, referral to a prosthodontist may be needed in order to restore form and function to the area resected during surgery. Prosthodontists also receive extra training and are more capable of making individualized maxillofacial prosthesis. These prostheses can be very complex and normal dentists will have very little experience making them. To summarize the key points, um, I'll first go through the clinical findings. Clinical findings of fibrosarcoma include uh, signs, which are a growing tissue mass with localized swelling, uh, possible displacement of the teeth, and possible erythema or ulceration. Symptoms of fibrosarcoma include pain, especially during expansion of the bone, uh, possible sensory abnormalities, and possible trismus. Summary of the radiographic findings include ill-defined borders that are non-corticated, radiolucent internal structure, and destruction of surrounding tissue. While surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy are all possible treatment options, radical surgery with wide excision is most commonly considered the best treatment option. Here is a slide with our work cited, and this slide shows our image credits of the picture that we used in this presentation. Thank you.